All right, time to round up one of our big stories of the week. Military investigators have confirmed Army Specialist Yvonne Lopez got into an argument with members of his unit before going on the shooting rampage on the Central Texas base. They say the argument was over a leave of absence request that had been denied. Lopez was reportedly being treated for depression, anxiety, he was also on medication and seeing a psychiatrist. Investigators say he shot 19 people, killing three of them before turning his gun on himself. In the wake of this shooting, many in Congress are calling on the Pentagon to relax rules barring soldiers from carrying guns while on a military installation. But would that help prevent incidents? Well, that's our topic this half hour, and we want to hear from you. You can share your thoughts on our Fox 26 Facebook page or send me a tweet at Sally Mac, Fox 26. In our newsroom, once again, we have legal analyst Chris Tritico, news analyst Mustafa Tamiz, and public policy analyst Jackie Bally. Good morning again, guys. Morning. What do you think? Well, first, let's talk about the mental health system. I've been railing for years that uh, the United States, this is not an Obamacare issue, the United States uh, nationwide has not paid attention to mental health care issues in this country. And virtually every mass shooting that we deal with in the United States is a result at some level, as, as a result of mental illness that has not been treated properly, just like this case again at Fort Hood. The United States wants to do something meaningful about our, our health care system, Mustafa Tamiz. It's let's do something about mental health. You know, it's a great topic. We always keep talk about it in our, in our nation. And, and everyone but from we never do anything. Uh, Al Gore onward that this has been a big part of our national conversation. But if, you, if, it's, if it's real, then there's money behind it. And there's never a budget line behind mental health that, that's adequate, whether at local level or state level or federal level and if we don't change that especially after 10 years of war and, and soldiers coming back if we can't take care of them back home then then what does it say about us you know Jackie Bally had we done something to help people with mental illnesses other than the three days in the hospital that insurance companies give you currently we might have been able to prevent things like this we have not paid attention to mental health policies in quite some time. We have 5% of the psychiatric beds uh, for people with mental illness that we did in the 50s, yet the population continues to grow. 200,000 out of our 2.2 million people in prison, they have mental problems. One third of our homeless, they have mental problems. Like you mentioned, every time we have a mass shooting, usually, <coughs> almost all of the time, there's some kind of mental illness that's involved. So yes, we need to start looking and paying more attention to our policies in that area. And we need to stop looking at gun control whenever something like this comes up, because that's the other question. Which one is one or the other? Well, and I want to talk about gun control in just a second, but the, 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 the problem with mental health care funding is, is this is a group of people that has no lobby. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy to shove this aside, because let's pay attention to the people who are, who are, who are bothering us. Right. And, and to exasperate this, a lot of the investigation in Medicaid often revolves around mental health issues because it's always very difficult to, uh, to diagnose it. And then when, when doctors that actually do a lot of this kind of work that build the federal government on Medicaid are always the first ones that get investigated. So you don't really get the good players, even right. the actors involved in this. And you brought up the gun control issue. We're going to talk about that coming back from Sally, but she's monitoring our social media accounts. Folks on our Facebook page talking about both the mental health side and the gun control side. <coughs> Maggie says you know, over-prescribing medications without monitoring. That's one of the big issues here when it comes to mental health. Stephanie, uh, she is an Army wife, and she says, yes, we should be able to carry on post. I refuse to live on the post for the simple fact that to do so would be to disarm myself, and she doesn't want to give up the ability to protect herself and her son if needed while her husband is deployed. You know, and uh, Jackie Bally, I'm going to just go straight to you on this. I saw a, uh, a leading, a high-ranking high general the other day in a news conference say, we don't let the soldiers carry weapons on base because it would take too much money to train them to carry a concealed handgun. If there's anybody in the country that should be able to That's carry exactly a gun. That's exactly what I'm thinking. I mean, <laughs> you know, they're, they're very high, highly trained, trained, very well trained, and if they can't carry a gun, who can? Right. So, and, and guns have been readily available 
for the last 50 years and statistics and, and the years have shown that gun-related gun crimes have decreased. So whenever we hear people say that the more guns are, or the easier guns are available, the more guns are out there, it's going to cause more crime, that is not true. It has not been true for 50 years. It will not be true for 50 years. And like you said, if our military can't carry guns, <laughs> I don't know where you're going to find anybody who, who can. can. You know, Mustafa, what would be wrong with allowing the military to carry a concealed handgun on base just like they could if they lived off base? For years, the, the Pentagon has uh, researched this, and this was a, a long drawn out policy, right? If you think about it, most bases, you have anywhere from a few hundred people to tens of thousands of people living in a very close environment. So if you put 30, 40, 50,000 guns in one area where you have kids, where you have families living, accidents are likely to happen. So rather than making you more safe, it's, it puts people in jeopardy, and that's why the Pentagon has pulled it off. And Jackie's chomping at the bit, but I'm not going to let her talk because we're out of time. <laughs> so that's it, Sally. <laughs> we'll be back next week talk about the hottest stories of the week. They're going to be fighting over the HEB <laughs> products, too, right. the next time we're I see in. you guys. All right. Two products. <laughs> Great ones. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much for wrapping up those stories for us today.